Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to review the TiVo Michelangelo. You might find this video informing. If you're new to 3D printing, it's going to be awesome for you. It's going to give you a little bit of an introduction into 3D printing. If you'd like to support my videos, please do click on the link below because look what you're going to win in August. We're giving away all this quadcopter gear and all these drones, goggles, and all kinds of stuff, even a custom FPV race quad. And I'm fairly new to 3D printing, so this is going to be a great video for you because you can see some of the pitfalls that I had in working with the TiVo Michelangelo and what you might expect if you get this printer. What's kind of amazing about this printer I think is that it's under $200. If you use that coupon code below you can get it under $200 and it also prints TPU which I love because that means that we can print little GoPro mounts for our quadcopters and other reviewers are saying that it will print ABS filament so that's pretty amazing and PETG. So you can print little custom quadcopter frames for free off of the Thingiverse website. So let's go ahead and get started with the review. First, we're gonna print a 3D print test, and this is all over the internet. Lots of people are doing this because it tests all the angles that this print nozzle is capable of, and uh, we'll see how it does in that test. Here we go. So let's see how the TiVo Michelangelo does for the 3D printer test. First, we're gonna show you the degrees of overhang from 10 to 80 degrees. Looks like it started right about 70 degrees to start to lose its edge. But look at that, there's, I mean, it's printing up into thin air right there. And on the other side, just about 70 degrees where it starts. Now on the flat part of the surface test, this is amazing. Look at that overhang right there. I mean, this has no supports underneath it. We print this entire piece with no supports. And it's able to do that, which I, I find that it, it seems like it defies gravity sometimes when uh, 3D printers do their work. But this is a really popular test, and I think so far the Michelangelo is probably doing um, 4.8 out of 5 stars for the 3D printer test. Almost perfect. So our next test for the Michelangelo is the Fox, and I'm just going to go here and select the G-code and press start, and it's going to heat up the hot end, the nozzle, not the bed, because remember guys, this does not have a heated bed which in some cases makes it more of a simple printer for beginners to use. If you start out with something like this, you can always move up to something with a larger bed later if you decide you like 3D printing. And that way you have a little less complications to worry about. Now it's off and running printing my Fox. And the Fox is a great test because it does have a lot of different flat angles on all those different vertices. So um, it's gonna be interesting to see how it does there. It was printing the bed at the very bottom. And I'm doing about a 30% infill inside this Fox. So the less infill you do, the more filament you're gonna save, uh, but it's not gonna be quite as strong of a model. So keep that in mind if you're changing up your infill. Now I do see some banding on here. I didn't get a perfect print, but right at the top of my Foxes is where you can usually see some banding on that flat spot on the, between the ears. And I don't see any stringing in between the ears either. A little bit more banding at the bottom. And I do see some ridge lines across the middle here. Uh, not too bad, not a perfect fox by any means, but uh, not the worst fox either. Now next up, we're gonna print a quadcopter. I wanna print a little micro brushless that can run two inch props. Probably gonna have 1104 motors on here and a little run cam micro cam, little nano version. It fits just in the slot, which is perfect. The guy on Thingiverse designed it for. And it seems to be doing a pretty good job after a little bit of tuning. Um, not completely perfect, but if you want to print really hardcore quad frames, you can print them out of PETG, and they're going to be a lot stronger than PLA. Um, every bit as strong as ABS, and some people would say maybe even a little bit stronger. But that's looking pretty good, so let's go ahead and take a look at it a little closer up. I was concerned about the holes, if it was going to be able to print the holes properly. Um, you don't really want to heat this up too much to make the holes bigger. Um, if you have a small little tiny um, Dremel tool, you can just lightly tap these holes out a little further. Uh, don't go too crazy with that. But you do see the 20 by 20 stack there. It looks pretty crisp and it looks pretty nice. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this one came out. And now I'm gonna add some motors on it and a flight controller and put the top end on and go fly it. Now while we're printing drone parts, let's go ahead and print some more. We have a DJI Spark gimbal cover here and I did a raft on it with no supports because that's the way they said to print this and it didn't fare so well. This is my second attempt and I didn't learn my lesson the first time and uh, not doing the raft. 
So I just decided to ditch the raft idea and flip it upside down in my slicer inside the Simplify 3D. This is a little better result. You can see it's still not perfect. There are some gaps there in between the DJI letters and the edge of the gimbal cover. So I'm gonna have to tweak the settings on this one. Maybe I can actually turn it up to 100% infill for this particular gimbal cover and maybe I'll have a better result. But with 3D printing, it's always about experimenting. So don't get upset if you don't get it the first time. Try it again and keep trying. Now for me to get TPU to stick, I had to add an extra build surface on there. This is called CC Tree. The masking tape did not work for me, but once I used the new build surface, it stuck pretty nice. I didn't have to use any type of raft and I didn't use any supports on this. I printed it like 100% infill. Um, you can do it less, but it turned out pretty decent. There is a little bit of stringing and there's some sort of banding on the overhang part but you can clean that up if you take a soldering iron and just lightly go around the center where the lens is going to be you can clean all that up in there but I'm pretty happy with this and now I can print TPU quadcopter parts for my GoPro mounts and stuff so uh, I'm pretty happy with the TPU print. So moving on I want to try to print something bigger and I want to max out the size on here I am all the way up to the top and this is my neighbor Totoro coin bank it says it's going to take just under eight hours and this is going to be a pretty long print the longest print that i've tried to do so far with this printer now long prints can be very frustrating because uh, if you're not babysitting them things can happen i do see a little bit of banding there in the middle of my coin bank he's not perfect by any means but that might also be printer settings but everything's looking pretty good here and looking pretty precise and when I came back in the morning, this is what I came back to. So an overnight print turns into this. If you're not watching it, what can happen is it can pop off the bed. And that is exactly what happened. It fell off the bed, or so I thought. And uh, now I've got to stop the printer and try again. And there's the top of that Totoro. Not very good. So on my second try, I wanted to do it during the day. Be able to kind of babysit this print make sure it didn't pop off the bed and look what happened something else happened again not sure what's up with that but I did figure it out so on my third try I moved one of the wires in the back was snagging uh, on the z-axis I believe the z-axis wire was snagging on the back of the printer and finally I was able to get the full extension on the z-axis so what was happening when that wire was grabbing it was causing it to stop right at the same point on every print and that's about six hours into this print so uh, be careful about the wires hanging off the back end of the printer because the linear bed needs to move back and forth and uh, it will snag so keep that in mind guys now also with this printer you do get an assembly manual this thing is really easy to put together it's only like four bolts and you get a usb cable a wrench some allen wrenches a screwdriver and this little card right here Kind of gives you some videos but those are all for other printers i don't know why they didn't give us videos for this one but maybe it's too new but this is my review for the michelangelo guys i think for under the 200 dollars price point it's a good printer to get started with it's definitely a beginner printer something that you can play around with and uh, learn the ropes of 3d printing it does take some time and you'll you'll have fun experimenting with it and seeing what kind of prints you can come up with I'll see you on the next one. Take care.